So, you want to make some chromatic aberration? Well, I'm not a scientist. That sounded... That, that sounded really, um... That sounded really professional. Hey guys, welcome back to That's by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender once again, doing some, uh... Effects, I guess? It's like post-processing. Chromatic aberration is kind of like when you see the red, green, and blue colors kind of disperse on the edges of an object or the screen or whatever. Uh, that kind of distortion kind of thing. So... I have a scene here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just render this. We have to render this first so Blender has an image that we can actually work with. We're going to go ahead and uh, close that right now. We don't need that. We just needed to render it once. Uh, and then we're going to go to compositing. And I'm going to actually go ahead and make sure backdrop is turned on up here. Close that. And we can actually close the timeline as well. We don't need that. I'm going to hit use nodes. And now you can see we have the render layer of our actual scene. We just rendered right there. And then we have the composite node, which is the actual way that it's compositing. So... I'm gonna hit. Uh, I'm gonna spread those out a little bit and hit uh, Shift A to search for a viewer node right there. And instead of hooking up the composite node, we're gonna cook, we're gonna hook up the uh, viewer node so we can actually see this behind here. I'm gonna tap V V once again uh, a couple times to zoom out, which is the zoom out key. And I believe uh, it's Shift V. Is it? It's Alt V. It's Alt V to zoom in. V to zoom out. Cool. So. We have that. I'm going to hit shift and we're going to search for uh, distortion. And we're going to do lens distortion right here. Grab that and just plop that somewhere there in between the render layers and the viewer node. Now you can see here we have dispersion and we have distort. Now distort's obviously just going to like distort it. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. Anyway, I'm right, going to put that on zero. I'm going to leave that where it is. And I'm going to turn dispersion up a little bit. And as you can see, the edges are now kind of having that little cool uh, effect. Now, if I if I make this extreme, you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. You see how it has those red, green, and, green, and blue colors kind of coming out. Um, now, as you can see, the corners are going to start to pull out. So we're going to do we're going to fix this by turning fit on, and then it's going to stay the same. Um, we can also turn uh, projector on as well. So then it doesn't like do all the weird like super big ghosting. If you don't want that, if you want something more uh, more subtle and it's just like the literal just actual need to zoom in here the actual just colors just being distorted uh you can do that but if you really do like the like super ghosty type thing with all the motion blur along with it then you can uh leave that off all right now jitter is kind of similar to that you can see the only thing it's going to do is going to add a little bit of grain in there just adds a little bit of grain if you turn if you tr choose jitter you see um yeah just a little bit of jitter up here on her eye you can see it quite a bit jitter yeah there we go um, but I'm going to leave projector on for this, actually. And uh, I'm going to turn this dispersion down really low. Because people tend to go overboard with this. It gets, like, kind of crazy and difficult to look at. But I'm actually going to turn project Let me turn projector off for a little bit. I want to I want to use projector because I do like the motion blur kind of effect with it. So I'm going to put this on, like, 0 0.02, maybe? 0 0.0. That's a little too little. 0 0.05. I mean, we'll just do 0.1. I think point one is fine. I don't think that's too much. I think it looks fine. So it's very subtle up at the top. Now, the closer she is to the edges, the more you'll see it. So if, we, if I were to go ahead and go back to layout real quick and grab our camera and kind of move her off to one side like this, right? And then go back and hit render to this again. Close. Oh, close that. And then go to composite. Now you can see, you can see more of the dispersion on the left-hand side here because she's closer to it. So anything closer to the edges is definitely going to have more, which is why the top and bottom of her uh, have quite a considerable amount of more of dispersion or chromatic aberration, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, that's that's literally it. Now the only thing you're going to want to make sure you remember to do, it's a big deal. You just saw when I rendered that, it rendered as a solid black. So it popped up the image and it rendered solid black. If you render with th this way, it's gonna it's gonna render solid black. So you have to make sure you have to make sure that you hook the composite node back up from the viewer node to the composite node once you are done, or once it will render solid black. And that is a big big deal. So many people are like, why is it rendering black? That's why, because you didn't hook the composite node back up. Now you can see we hooked it back up. It's actually showing something. So. That's it for the tutorial, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you learned something new. I will see you, ladies and gentlemen, in the next one. We actually just hit 40,000 uh, subscribers a little bit ago. Thank you so much uh, for all the support on all the videos, ladies and gentlemen. It, it really, really means a lot to me. Um, very, very cool that we actually hit 40,000 on the channel. Thank you for the support. All, all the people that are always uh, commenting nice things, and I'm actually able to help you guys out every single day. Very very awesome stuff. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. We'll see you in the next tutorial. Uh, but until then, bye-bye.